I am a death dealer. Sworn to destroy those known as the Lycans. Our war has raged for centuries, unseen by human eyes. But all that is about to change. Been an incredibly kind of passionate, fantastic experience making the film. It's been my favorite job I think I've ever done. It's not a gory movie. Because it has werewolves and vampires, it's really hard to say, what are you making, um, you know, an action movie or a horror movie? It is more of an action movie. That's why I wanted to make something that was different. It's an action movie that has vampires and werewolves. So the world of vampires has uh, a long and, and, and varied history. We're kind of taking that apart and then putting it back together again in our own way. What? Poet, deconstructivist vampirism. Whether you like it or not, you're in the middle of a war that's been raging for the better part of a thousand years. A blood feud between vampires and lichens. Werewolves. It's a red-hot script. It's quite easily identifiable as uh, a rocker. Whatever the genre, it absolutely works. No! I mean, it's not just, you know, cars blowing up and guys jumping off the roofs. It's really slick, and it's interesting. I have a background in genetic engineering. Uh, given that, I wanted to take a different approach to the werewolves, werewolves and vampires in this film. Uh, I wanted to use science as a basis rather than mysticism. We've been searching for someone, a direct descendant of Alexander Corvinus, the first true immortal. The werewolves want to find somebody with a special trait. They were after you. Other than food, why would Lycan stalk a human? I created a virus, uh, which was the reason why vampires and werewolves became what they f had finally become. If my cover is indeed a carrier, if vampires... Relax, old friend. I've tasted his flesh. Soon, he will come looking for us. We lost him. You lost him. Get in. Consider yourself lucky. Most humans die within an hour of being bitten by an immortal. The viruses we transmit are deadly. And if you bit me, what, I become a vampire instead? No, you die. Many, many centuries before the time the film takes place, uh, the werewolves were slaves of the vampires. And whilst the vampires were in their crypts, the werewolves would guard them in the daylight. My character, Lucian, fell in love with the daughter of Victor, who's the sort of overlord of the vampires. Um, but it was forbidden, and Victor had his daughter killed. And so because of this, Lucian has uh, a huge hatred of Victor especially, and, and of vampires in general. And so this war has built up because of this, between Lucian's werewolves and Victor's vampires. Uh, Lucian's mission is to get Michael and uh, destroy the vampires. So that's my job. I'm kind of like his, uh, his hammer, the big bad wolf. Victor is one of three elders of uh, the vampire world. At the time the film opens, I am in fact asleep. It's not my turn to rule, but I am awakened by Kate Beckinsale in order to take care of werewolf trouble. They've hated each other for centuries, and uh, under the edict of both races, they were told to stay away from each other. <laughs> Selene breaks the edict and starts falling in love with a werewolf or a lichen. I've been looking for you everywhere. Not now. He's been bitten. You're human. He's been marked by a lichen. You know it's forbidden! At the beginning of the movie, she's almost forgotten that she's a woman. She's absolutely focused on um, revenge and killing, and she's really good at it. <laughs> she meets Michael, she starts to kind of get a kind of memory of what it's like to be human and to be with humans. I'm not staying here alone. You will if you want to live. No, I want to go with you. She is 
not completely human, but she is actually a human somewhere underneath that. What are you doing? I'd hesitate in calling it a love story because that's not that fleshed out in this chapter of whatever this will be. But it's more of a, a dynamic attraction. I don't know if I'd say it's falling in love, but there's definitely a push-pull element to it. Is that Michael? Is it Michael? What the hell is going on? What's happening to me? I'm coming out. If you go to him, you'll never be welcome to this house again. I don't think there are that many kind of great action movie roles for women. You know, it's usually the wife that is at home worrying on the phone. And that's not ever been that interesting to me. The other thing about action movies with female leads is that they can be quite camp and sort of winky. What really appealed to me about this was that it was just, it could have been a guy. And I thought that was really fresh and interesting, and then I had to pull it off. So. <laughs> Kate is just razor sharp in this movie. I think she's going to blow people's socks off. Um, her acting is astounding. Um, she looks amazing, and she's doing all these stunts. And it is so out of the box for anything she's ever done that for a movie like this, you usually have a cardboard cutout. And she has just breathed life into Sling and yanked her off the page and played with her like putty and just created this slick, cool, complicated character. This is an action film, and the special effects, the monsters, are just incredible. And I'm very, very scared by them. They're just so real. Guy Himber and his group of people at the creature shop have designed these monsters and Bill Nye is so frightening to me when he's wearing his prosthetic makeup as Victor that I can't look him in the eye. Leave us. The other thing about being in the prosthetic is that nobody knows, even people on the set don't really know what it entails. Somebody came up to me and said, so there's a kind of zip up the back, is there? And you go, no, there's no zip here. <laughs> film that is trying to do most of our effects live. There are a lot of things that digital effects really can't do. And coming up with lifelike creatures that can interact with human actors, it's impossible for digital effects. Our werewolves could walk down the street and, and people would run screaming. So putting werewolves that are tangible things, guys in, in incredible suits, with animatronic faces, it's gonna be something special. Um, what Kurt's wearing is just the head and animatronic vest that's part of the werewolf costume. He has a full range of lip movement, muzzle movement. He also has a comm link that allows the lead puppeteer to speak to him so they can cue roars, cues to camera, that kind of stuff. And then all kind of works together. Those actors with the animatronic heads are actually looking at a video feed, so they have absolutely no depth perception whatsoever. And most of the stuff with werewolves will be on special stilts. They're all built specific to the performer. It's basically carbon fiber sockets that are built around the life cast of the person's legs. And then we find uh, performers that are willing to suffer the abuse of learning them and uh, <laughs> doing stuff. like a pack of rabid dogs! It takes four operators to do, to fully operate each werewolf. Uh, but the effect is astonishing. Celine's jump originally, I think, was on a 50-foot jump and turn into about a 100-foot jump. Celine's double, Nicole Randall, gets on top of this building. She's connected to a cable which runs up above her and then down to our system that was on the ground. And basically, all she has to do is step off. Two, one. We stopped her 15 feet in the air, and then we overlapped another piece from about 20 feet in the air that took her straight to the ground where in one shot she stepped and walked away. The greatest vampire movie ever made. I did what was necessary to protect the species, as I am forced to do yet again. An 
Underworld is a very cool movie. When I talk to my two daughters about why they want to go see Underworld, it's because Kate Beckinsale is so fantastic. She's powerful, she's sexy, she's, uh, I don't know, what's the word, rad?